my intention of sharing this content with you today is to have a global impact. I believe that it's possible to remove violence, hate, crime, depression, suicide, uh, all these things can be removed from society when we help people grow to the sixth level in the eight levels of human potential. If we get enough people to a high enough level of global contribution, then our whole planet, the way all of us approach life is gonna shift. And I, it is my intention, my mission and my purpose to see that happen. I wanna see this education in schools. I wanna see schools teaching basic life skills that actually make a difference for people's everyday lives. That's what I'm here to do and I really hope that with all my heart, that what I share with you today makes a real impact in your life. Hello and welcome. My name is Ross Pepper and I am so excited to be able to share this with you today. I'm gonna to be talking about the eight levels of human potential. It doesn't matter who you are, these eight levels apply. I have been working with people for you know over 10 years now, coaching them using different skills, tools, and methodologies. And over that time, I've discovered more and more about how much this determines our life, it determines our outcomes, it determines our communication, it determines how we approach life. It is fundamental in deciding our approach to life. So I wanna share it with you today so I can share with you the incredible learnings that have transformed the way that I communicate with people, the way I coach people, and the difference it makes to their lives in everything that they do. So the first one of these of the eight levels of human potential is survival. Basically, this is where we're all born at. We're all born in a place of survival. So let me just write that up for you. Okay, so survival. The first one there being survival. We're born into a state of survival. We need food, we need shelter. Okay, we need to be kept warm, we need to survive. So as a baby, when we're born, Everything is survival, okay? We're hungry, we scream, ah! We poo our nappy, we scream. We are tired, we scream. Everything is survival. As we grow and develop though, and our basic needs are taken care of, our food and our shelter, we can then start fulfilling our other needs. We can then move into the likes of um, our tribe, Okay, so we're as an individual, we need to survive. Once we've figured out how to survive, okay, that's getting the food off our parents when we're young. As we get older, we need to find other ways to survive. But as young children, that's the way we manage to solve that. Once we've solved that though, we then start to fit in and become part of the tribe. So the next level there is obviously going to be tribe. So we become part of the tribe and this is the second level. Most humans are actually at levels two or four. So at the second rung or the, um, the fourth rung, there's also another one in between, which we'll talk about all of these as we go. So the second one is tribal. There's a lot of people at this tribal level. We have a need to fit in. In fact, there's a basically a biological drive for us as human beings to fit in. Most people on this planet have some version of um, and, and success doesn't necessarily make this disappear either, but it's typically some version of um, I'm not good enough, I'm not lovable, or I don't fit in. That's typically the flavor of things that we say to ourselves and or at least driven to overcome those things. So at the second level there, at the tribal level, this is where we really start to... Um, fit in with others. We have this need to fit in. Now, one of the interesting things that happens at this second level, the tribal level, is that we, we're we basically a victim. So I want to point that down. I want to write that down as well. So we are dependent. So that's probably the best way to put it, dependent. Okay, so we are dependent. And as dependent beings or humans, we rely a lot on other people. So once we've figured out how to survive, we then work as a tribe, but we're still quite dependent on our tribe. Uh, our tribe give us all sorts of things, mostly around 
recognition of self, okay? That need to fit in gets taken care of quite strongly here. That's why tribe, family tribe is really important, uh, especially as we're young and growing up, to be able to fit into our tribe. Our first tribe is our family and being able to fit in there makes us, helps us to understand that we're lovable, helps us to understand that we're good enough and helps us to understand that we do fit in. However, we're still very dependent. We haven't yet taken ownership of our lives. So um, what that means is that at that level, there's a lot of um, blame and justification. Oh, I couldn't do that because of this. I couldn't because of that. Uh, it was the weather. It was the traffic. There's a lot of things that are blamed externally to ourselves. We're not really yet taking ownership of our own lives. And that's where the next level comes in. So once we're kind of, we're kind of fitting in as a tribe, and then we go, you know what? I want more out of life. There's got to be more than just this. I want more. So then along comes the warrior. The warrior. And the warrior, interestingly enough, is actually in a state of rebellion. Okay, so rebellion is the next one there. The warrior says, I want more. And let's, let's go back to, um, to caveman times. It's a really great example. So here we are part of a tribe and we've got a little watering hole that's starting to dry up. But we look over there and we see another tribe with a better watering hole than ours. So the warrior goes, you know what? I would like that watering hole and I'm going to go get it. So the warrior then starts to take responsibility for getting what they want in life. So you talk about the rebellious teenager. Okay, the rebellious teenager has been part of a tribe for a long time, but they want more. The tribe's been nice, the tribe has supported them, but they want more than what just the tribe provides. So the rebellious teenager steps into their warrior and starts to claim what they want. Now, the problem that we experience here with the warrior is because they're in a state of rebellion, it can be really difficult to communicate and work with this person. Someone who is strongly in the warrior or third level of the eight levels of human potential, what you'll discover is that they have a very win-lose mentality about life. Okay, so we're either winning or we're losing. So if we're, if somebody else is winning, then we're losing. So their mindset and their approach to life is very much that there's always a fight and somebody always has to lose. There's no abundance yet. So you haven't got to abundance mindset where everybody gets to win. Here, it's very much win-lose. What you'll be looking to do with an individual like this is work out how their goals and your goals align. So you can try and get them on board and work together. Because this person here, as a, as a strong warrior, is very much about win and lose. There's very much that opposite. Um, so it's not, they, don't, they don't believe it's possible for both people to win. At this tribal level, as a dependent, there's actually quite often lose-lose, like everybody's losing. There's, there's very little abundance here. There's very, in fact, it's the opposite to abundance at this level. Uh, there is no abundance. Um, there's no way that everybody can win. In fact, if anybody wins, once again, you know, somebody's going to be losing and um, there's not enough to go around. There's a lot of scarcity here. <clears throat> So the warrior, however, knows that there's enough out there, but only they don't see abundance for everyone. They see that there's abundance, but you need to win to get it and somebody needs to lose. So, they, so their abundance is growing, but they still have a long way to go. So at this warrior level, as they fight and they fight for everything, believing that somebody has to win and somebody has to lose, hopefully one day they stop this fight. They go, you know what? I can get, I, get what I want but I'm sick of fighting for it. There has to be a better way. So they understand that they are good enough, that they are strong enough, and they are capable of creating whatever results they want in the world. So here we are. And then they moved, hopefully, to the next level. The next level is called control. Okay, the next level is control. Now, this one is independent. Oops. Okay, so that one there is independent. And somebody who is independent is capable of working on their own. They're capable of producing their own results 
and they're typically very good at use at working at getting things done. Have you ever heard that saying, if you want something done, give it to a busy person? This is who they're talking about. Someone at the control level is typically very busy. They're very good at managing their time and getting things done. They've, the, the, the rebel will sometimes be good at getting things done, but sometimes may not be. The person at the control level, the independent, is very much in control of their life, of their time, and what they're gonna put in it and not. So if they say, no, I'm not gonna do something, then they're not going to. They'll work out whether or not it works in, in, their, um, in their world to do what your request. However, if you do want something done, give it to a busy person because they're really great at managing time. So the control person here is independent. Okay, they're sick of the fight. So they've got, there's gotta be a better way and they move to control. And at control, they start to control their environment. They have other people doing the work for them. They don't necessarily need to do everything themselves. It's not always a fight. I don't need to fight for everything. I can create control here so that I don't have to force, put my force and my fist down every time and fight for it. I create rules and regulations. So this control level, a great example of that is government. Okay, government is very for level for control. There's lots of rules and regulations. Everything you do must fit into what they see as the right way to do it. So everything is very heavily controlled to create this kind of even playing field. So at this control level, um, the colors here are also appropriate. So tribe is blue, the warrior is red, and control, sorry, the tribe is purple, uh, warrior is red, and the control is blue. Uh, blue has a lot of trust in it as well. So this control level has a lot of trust because it's regulated and is controlled. So there's a lot of trust here. If you're in an industry that, that lacks trust, you'll typically find a lot of the organizations have a lot of blue in their logos and their branding. What the blue does is it creates confidence. So you'll see uh, in Australia, the, uh, the police wear blue uniforms because of the trust. The doctors and nurses sometimes wear blue as well. So you'll see that in the medical industry, they wear blue to create that trust. So wherever you need trust, you'll see there's a lot of blue that is used. Um, political parties in Australia also use a lot of blue as well. Now, if the person at the control level um, goes, you know what, this is really great. I'm getting some good results, but I want more. I want, there's more to life than just this. Then what happens is comes along our driver. I used to refer to this person as the entrepreneur. Okay, the entrepreneur. Um, but I now call it the driver. And the reason I actually do that, I believe um, the original study that this came from was called Spiral Dynamics. Uh, I studied it many, many years ago briefly and I used it for marketing. Like I only ever used it for marketing. I didn't know a lot about it, but I understood enough about it to recognize uh, the sort of colors I might use and the language that I might use, um, the challenges and things that they might have. But as, I, as the years went on, I was doing marketing for probably about seven years and as the years went on, I continued to coach and I discovered that this was way more than that. So over those years, I started building up an understanding of all of this such that I understand how these people think. I understand their paradigm of life and how that impacts everything they do. The same at each level. Each one of these levels, to move to the next, somebody, the, the individual who moves on, has solved the problem that is inherent with that level. So there's something that you need to solve at each of these levels to be able to progress. Once you have solved that piece of that puzzle, that, you know, that you've, in, you've fixed, solved, and answered that piece of life, then you, it gives you a sense of confidence. Each of these levels is a new level of confidence. One thing I noticed, um, which kind of brought all that together for me, a good friend of mine and business colleague moved from a level five driver into a level six global contributor. And we'll talk about that in a moment. But when they moved from here to there, they were already incredibly confident individuals. They're very tall, they were strong, they played a lot of physical sport. Um, they had a great presence. Like, very strong, powerful, confident individual. And then as he went from here to here, he actually became more confident. But the confidence went from external to internal. So he didn't need to show the external confidence anymore. It just became more internal. 
and I actually saw the increase in confidence. So you know when people are quietly confident, they go from, yeah, I'm, I'm tough, I'm strong, look out. And they move to this calm strength inside where regardless of what's happening around them, they know that they're in control of their environment. That was what happened. And that was when I noticed and I put the pieces together that each of these levels is actually a new level of confidence. So what happens to take someone from the tribal level to the warrior level is that they get that sense of self-confidence. That's what they get. They go, you know what? I'm going to do this myself. And they start taking on the responsibility for making their results. They start getting that they are enough, that they're good enough, that they're strong enough, and they're capable enough. Every human being on the planet is capable of extraordinary amounts of success, power, and all sorts of things. We can all achieve way more than we do, but we're lacking the self-belief to do that. And as we start growing our self-belief and filling in some of these you know, pieces of the puzzle, the first one is to get that we are enough. Okay, everybody on the planet, we are good enough, we are lovable, and the only acceptance we need is our own. We don't need to fit in with anyone else. The only person that, on this planet that needs to accept you is you. And as you get that about yourself, the only, person, the only acceptance you need is your own, you empower yourself to then go and chase your dreams. And in doing that, you start achieving success. As you start achieving success, then you can start reaching to get more and more. And you'll fill in these pieces of puzzle, these puzzle pieces of life, and you will grow to extraordinary heights and be able to achieve amazing things. You know, someone here as a driver, what they achieve in their lifetime is extraordinary. And, if, and even in a short amount of time, they'll get so much done, they're incredibly productive and driven. So the driver, in fact, I want to add another word here. They go from independent to interdependent or what I like to refer to it as win-win. So this individual who is driven, they're looking for win-win opportunities. So they know that there's abundance on this planet. There's endless resources. There's endless everything. There's abundance everywhere on this planet. There's abundance of choices. So at this level, we see very little choice. So it's very, very small in what we think is possible. We see life as very few choices. Oh, I didn't have any choice. Well, you did, you had infinite choice. So at this tribal level, the choices were always there. We just don't see them at this level. As we start to get more confidence and start doing things and reaching out and really start to grow our confidence and our perception of the world and everything else, we start to see infinite options. We go from none to some to lots to infinite choices. And the choices are always there, it's just that we don't see them. And as we grow, we see more and more. Now, at this point, we look for win-win opportunities. It's like, well, I could do all the work myself, or I could look for someone else to share it with. Because if you and I work together, we can create way more than we could have achieved on our own. So by creating win-win opportunities, you and I are gonna to win to an exponential degree. And that's why I used to refer to this as the entrepreneur. Because at this level, the entrepreneur, who is a driver, looks for win-win opportunities to create exponential business growth. Therefore, they create extraordinary amounts of money. Um, anyone's capable of this, it just takes some learning and some attitude change sometimes to make that happen. As I said, the first thing is to believe that you are completely capable of anything you ever dreamt of. The only acceptance that you need is your own, and now it's time to go get those dreams. So as you move your way through, so hopefully if, you're, if you uh, are stuck up here, that, that kind of spoke to you. So as you get to here, what happens typically to move to the next level, to the sixth of these levels? I'm only gonna really talk about the sixth level. Um, the, the rest gets kind of a little bit more theoretical because there's not a lot of people on the planet that are further down and they also disappear from society. So, <clears throat> excuse me. So the sixth level, what typically occurs here? Okay, this one is called contribution. Now, the driver or entrepreneur, what will typically happen at this point is they'll make so much money that they just realize that money isn't the answer. The money doesn't solve the problems. They go, I've got more money than I'm ever gonna spend, um, but you know, this is gonna carry on for lifetimes. 
This is, I've got a legacy here, but I'm not complete. I'm not fulfilled. I believe I need to globally contribute to the planet. So what will happen at this point, once they've made enough money through their win-win and their, their very driven and uh, intentional attitudes, and they've been successful, they'll then look at contributing on a global scale. So if we talk about Bill Gates, Bill Gates made so much money and he now gives back on a global scale. Okay, he now creates foundations, he donates money, he makes a massive impact on this planet because he's been successful. He's worked his way through these levels. So as a global contributor, he now donates to, back to society. He makes a global impact. What you'll discover though, and I think it's already begun, is that he, be, he will start to disappear from society. You'll hear less and less about him. Um, you might hear you know, a, a news article occasionally, but for a while there, he was very vocal in his contributions. Like everybody knew when he was contributing something or you know, how much money he was giving and the impact he was making. The impact will still probably be there, but he will be less involved and vocal about it as he moves from global contributor into the seventh level. The seventh level is also about kind of, it goes back to self growth. You'll notice that these odd levels, self, other, self, other, self, other, self, other. So they go through those levels. So at the odd levels, they're very self-focused. And at the even levels, it's very, um, I guess, um, community focused. Although it does grow at each of these levels as you go out, the driver, for example, is looking for a win-win. Like they're very self-focused because they want success for themselves, but it's more globally focused because they've already learned the lessons through here and they've been in the control level. So they know what, what the benefits are of working together with others. <clears throat> um, whereas the survival is very much life and death. Like if, if there's an adult in survival, every process and th thought that they have is inside of life and death. So it can get really messy and there's a lot of um, mental um, problems that people develop if they go to a space of survival as an adult. Uh, we can go up and down through these. We don't necessarily always progress forward. We can go backwards. You will typically only shift in a crisis moment. So as a coach, sometimes I will manufacture a crisis moment. Like if someone's stuck in life, I need to get them really clear about, about um, whether or not they're happy being stuck. And if they're not happy being stuck, to get that as a really conscious thought. Because if we're, not, if we're stuck in life and we kind of keep pushing that thought to the back, we're going to be stuck for a very, very long time. So bringing that thought to the front, if you are stuck and wanting to change your life, then really kind of aggravate that, that awareness of being stuck so that you can create some momentum to shift out of there, take some ownership for your life and really make a difference. And as you move through here into the global contribution, okay, the global contributor, they then start to disappear from society. They go back into, um, well, I've made an impact on the planet. I've done everything I've come here to do. Now I'm going to sort of retire um, and do some self-reflection. And that's where they move on to the, hopefully the eighth level of enlightenment. So this is a journey of enlightenment. Um, whether or not you get stuck somewhere along the way, I hope you don't. Uh, my intention is to help people move through to the contribution level. Um, once they're globally contributing, then hopefully they'll make enough impact to be able to then continue their journey on. But my intention is to help people move through here, make enough money in life so that they can become global contributors. I hope what you have learned here has been useful. There's a lot more I can teach about this, a lot more. The impact that this makes is extraordinary in, in lives everywhere. I know that if somebody tries to start their own business and they're at tribal, they're probably going to fail. Um, they may not like working for someone else, but at the tribal level, being dependent, they're not going to be successful. The first level that can be successful in business is actually the warrior, because they'll often do what it takes to, to be successful. The, the challenge that they will have is that there always has to be a fight and there always has to be a winner and a, and a loser. So um, they can struggle here to be successful. And there's a lot, often a lot of burnout. So someone will start a business, they'll be a warrior and they'll just be fighting, fighting, fighting. And they'll just go, you know what? I'm sick of this, I've had enough. Um, I'm making good money, but it's not worth it. And they'll shut down their business um, and potentially move back to the tribal. So rather than moving to the control where they actually control their business. Sometimes they'll try to move to control, uh, but it won't always be successful because they haven't learned what they, what they need to to create that control. And there's a lot of leadership skills that actually come in at this point. And it's a, a lot of it can be contrasted against the, uh, the warrior. 
Uh, I've seen a lot of warriors who have tried to become great leaders and quite often they'll, they'll start being really good as a leader, then someone makes a mistake and they're kind of like, oh, get out of the way, I'll do this. I can't believe you've done that again. Their warrior comes back in again and it creates a lot of conflict. Uh, so that's, that's the model. And, and the further we get through here, the bigger the difference we make. For those that are they're at the driver level, working out how to create the win-win situations, be able to inspire people and really get amazing things out of them is one of the, the biggest wins uh, and lessons that you'll be getting at this level. So I hope that's been useful. You got any questions, please shoot them through to me. Once again, my name is Ross Pepper. This is the model that I use to inspire people to help them grow through their journey in life to achieve extraordinary results. If you do have any questions about this, you'd like to get in contact, or you'd like to implement this, or see how it's gonna make an impact in your personal life, in your business life, or in the corporation that you're working for, please reach out. My name is Ross Pepper. My website is rosspepper.com. If you jump on over to that website, you'll have access to uh, to anything you need there and if you need to speak to me then you can find my contact details on there uh, myself and one of my team will respond to you and i really look forward to helping you impact this into your life into your business your world your relationships wherever it happens to be because i know that this has been the access to for the people that i've worked with to have the life of their dreams so please reach out and get your life rocking